Well, hi, Floss Tube. This is Diane, the Be a Blessing Stitcher. Today is Sunday, March 24, and this is Floss Tube number 15. I haven't been keeping very close track. Um, anyway, welcome to my channel, you guys. I am so glad that you've joined me again today for all those who are coming back. For anybody new that has happened across my channel, welcome. I'm glad you stopped by for a visit. And I hope that you see something that you like and that you'll subscribe. Um, like, subscribe, do all the things, ring the bell. I think that's what they say. Um, so I'm so glad you're here. My channel is primarily about cross stitch. I enjoy sewing. I don't do a whole lot of it right now, but I have a hefty fabric collection, so I might show some of my collection once in a while. Um, so I just wanted to pop on. I know they don't like it when you say pop on. I just wanted to stop by and um, give a quick update for you guys, although my updates never seem to be quick. I have it. Um, a tendency to ramble. Um, so anyway, welcome. Um, I think what I'm going to do today is just kind of jump in. I don't really have anything real new to s in my life update. Nope, not really a whole lot going on. I am headed to Osage in about a week or so for an open stitch, which I'm looking forward to. Um, it's about a three-day stitch. Thursday through like Sunday noon. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's at Stitchery Nook. Um, that's kind of going to be my first really official um, paid for type of a retreat. It's not really a retreat, but it's a, an open stitch. And I'm doing it with a friend um, that I actually found through FlossTube. So um, I'm excited to go to that. I'm excited to um, meet a few new people and I'm super excited, of course, to go shopping. <laughs> Um, this particular episode may be a little bit haul heavy um, with needlework market and stuff in there. Um, so I think I'm just going to kind of jump in and get started with what I have been working on. I do have a few finishes, a few FFOs um, that I can show you. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with my first one, which is Oak Christmas Tree. My first one that I'm going to show you is um, a pattern that's by Carolyn Needle Arts on Etsy. Um, I encourage you guys to go check her out. I gave a, I had a giveaway for her, um, her Etsy shop a few times back, and I really think her patterns are so super cute. Um, she incorporates some beads and stuff into hers, which just adds a little extra pop. So the first one that I've done, actually it's the only one that I've done so far, is Oh Christmas Tree. And I finally got it finished. I put the beads on and I finished it up and I ended up using something that Katie from So Tattered had recommended called chenille it and so I stitched that all the way around the edges. <laughs> I can see all of my batting floating around my edges. Um, so anyway that went around the edges and then I just kind of ruffled it up and stitched it down again. So it turned out really super cute. I don't know if you can see the beading and stuff in there, but she's got little beads all through that tree, which I think I just love. Just adds an extra little pop. I did this one. I actually have my card handy. Um, XG Designs Brown Paper 40 Count, and I did um, a little bit of a color conversion. So if anybody wants that, it's actually kind of long, so I don't think I'll go ahead and talk about all of that. So, um, but I actually finished it without the beads back on December 21. I put the beads on on March 2, and I actually finished, finished it this past week. So I have something that can go into my stash for next year's decorating. I got a little pucker here that's bugging me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to squish it around and get rid of that. But anyway, I may still end up putting some kind of a border around the edge because when I stitched it down, I don't love that I can see all my stitching around the outside edge. So I may put some kind of a braiding, a cording or something yet around the inside. But I like it to be neutral, so it'll probably be something similar in color just to kind of um, finish off those edges a little bit more. So that's my first one. And then I had to, of course, do my next um, stitching bird by heart and hand, I had to get my Easter one done. And I got that one finished and laced and put into the frame. I think it's super cute. I really like these little birds. And they're a quick stitch. 
They really do go pretty fast. I did change out the color of this vine. It was actually a darker Kelly green and I just wasn't vibing on it, didn't like it. So I changed it to the same color that was in the egg over here and I like it a whole lot better. So I'm so happy to have that one done. And then I also tackled, sorry, I'm on my couch today so I have to reach a little bit for everything. Um, I've been doing um, seasons two. This was my August one that I did um, and I have them on one of Chantel 141 Designs. Um, uh, it's called On the Edge um, Finishing Board. I think it's got like a little box that protrudes out the front so you can put little decorations and stuff in it. It's a really super cute finishing. Um, have a magnet on the back so that I can change them out. And I haven't touched those in a while, but I did get my March one finished. So here's my March. And I am using um, the Floss Conversion from Kimberly's at Fat Quarter Shop. I really liked her colors better than the ones that were called for. So that's been, those are so fun. Those are just a super fun stitch. I'm really enjoying those. So I have to hop in now and get April done or May. I don't know. I'm not doing them in any order, as you can see. This one I do believe I'm going to send off to one of my friends. Um, there's a, a good friend of mine who just started a finishing business. Her name is Tammy and it's called, I always forget, it used to be Tammy's Crafty Life, but now I think it's called Woodland Stitching Studio. I think um, she has a YouTube channel. Um, so I'm gonna send her a box of a few things to finish for me. I did do some of them myself. I don't love to finish. I love the product and I love the satisfaction I get when I'm finished, but I don't actually love the process of finishing. Sort of, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's totally true either, but anyway, I'm gonna have her do a few for me just to kind of get me caught up a little bit because I seem to be a little bit behind. And then I decided I needed a couple of Easter um, things to put on my tiered tray. And so I did um, my Primrose Cottage. I had, nope, Cherry Hill Stitchery. I had done these, purchased these last year and um, Nicole Spore had done them. And so they were super quick stitches. Bunnies love carrots and carrot patch hop. Super cute little stitches. Those were done on mystery fabric. That was just a couple of scraps that I had laying around, um, but it was pretty open weave. So I ended up um, putting a backing on them when I was finished, just so that you wouldn't see through them. Um, and I just put some fabric. This one I ran it the wrong way. <laughs> I said, good enough. <laughs> this one's the right way. Um, that was something that I got from 123 Stitch. Nope, from Fat Quarter Shop. Back when I started with Nicole in 2022, um, the very first stitch that I jumped into after my hiatus from cross-stitching was one from Primrose Cottage um, called Welcome Fall, I believe it was, and this was the backing fabric. And because I don't ever underbuy anything, I bought like a yard, <laughs> so I have a bunch of this left. So I thought that was the perfect color for them. I love them. Um, I think my trim was something I just picked up at like either Joann's um, or Hobby Lobby. I can't quite remember. It might have even been Walmart. And just stitched that in with it. So those were super, super fun. I enjoyed doing those. And the only other thing that I really did was my Easter bird. I had done a Christmas one and I never got it finished because a lot of times I don't put my three-tiered tray out at Christmas time. I usually have stockings out instead. So I never got my Christmas one fully finished. Um, so I just finished it off. It's not pretty because they just pop out. And so it's just straight edges, nothing special. Um, but I did get that one laced and I got that one ready to go for Christmas next year too. So I spent a little bit of time doing some finishing and that feels really good to have stuff done um, and kind of just off the pile. Um, doesn't mean I don't still have a pile. <laughs> Okay, then I think what I'm gonna jump into next are the things that I've been working on, my whips. Um, it's been a little while since I've been here, so I have a few that I can show you. Um, my first one that I have been trying to work on, on the, oh, by the way, here's my seasons pattern. I don't know if you can see it very well from here, but all of the different pictures are here at the bottom. 
but they don't really look like that. These are quite a bit darker than what they turn out to be. First of all, my fabric background is much lighter. I think I'm using paper bark on mine from Fox and Rabbit. Um, let me see if I have a card in here that says what size it is. Oh, it's not paper bark. This one is 32 count Lugana Platinum. What am I using paper bark on? Hmm. I know I'm using it on something. Um, anyway, this is 32 count Lugano Platinum. I think I had to go that size in order to get it to kind of be the right size that I wanted. So that's my seasons project. Have only 10 more to go. <laughs> but it's okay. I really don't care. Um, <laughs> my puppy is just like glued to my side. Yeah, did you want to say hi to everybody? Did you want to say hi? I don't sit on the couch very much, do I? <laughs> this is special. Okay, so then I think what I'll do next is um, I'll jump into the one that I've actually been working on, which is Lady of the Flag. I've been trying to work on that one. Oh, good grief. Where is she? She's not in my bag, you guys. I think I'm gonna have to find her. Hang on, I'll be right back. And I'm back, I found her. She was still on a hoop. I haven't made a whole lot of progress on her. Sometimes the, uh, the fourth lands on a day that I work, so I end up with maybe three, four hours tops that I get to stitch on her, and that's if I don't have anything going. So this is all that I have for progress so far. I'm in the middle of her dress. So there's nothing terribly exciting happening yet. But I think before when I showed it to you guys, I had done the first leg in some of this, not even all the way to the bottom. So I was able to finish that up and do a couple more sections. I think this section is new. So I didn't get a whole lot of time in on her, not nearly as much as I wanted to. Um, but maybe the next time, that's the whole purpose of this is to just get some time, get some stitches in on her. So, um, that one's going to stay in my rotation hopefully every fourth. I'm still kind of getting into the groove with that. Hard for me to remember. Sometimes it sneaks up on me and it's like, oh, I missed it. So then I take a different day and I do it. So, so that's my Lady of the Flag. And then I have been working on the Smith Sampler. And have really enjoyed this one. I stepped away from it now for a little bit because I had to get caught up on some other things. But this is by Scarlet House, and this is the Smith Sampler. I just love this one. The colors in that one spoke to me so, so much. And my grandmother's uh, maiden name was Zwan, and so I, it happens to be five letters, and so I'm going to change Smith in here to Zwan, and I'm doing this one in memory of my Grandma Velma. So I'm super excited to... I do have to chart it though, because it's not back stitching, it's actual stitches. And I'm getting close to that basket. I think I might've actually just started it. So I'm gonna have to sit down and spend a little time charting out the names there instead of Smith there. So, and my progress so far on that one is, let me see if I have a card. Okay, I do. So I'm using 40 count flax for this one. And I'm pretty sure I have changed all the colors. I was doing um, Roxy Flusco on this one and wasn't completely working for me. So I ended up, sorry, I had a needle hanging there trying to get my threads organized. Um, I've been kind of just changing colors as I feel that it's needed, just kind of searching my stash. Most of it is Roxy Flosco, but I do have some color in cotton in there and um, just a few others just to kind of imitate the colors that I'm seeing on the picture, because I love the picture. But you guys, that border is no joke. That border is filled in, it's solid. I, just, I don't have it done, obviously, on all of them. I've got a few of them down the side here that are done, but <laughs> that border is no joke. So that is going to be a work in progress for quite a while. By the way, if I didn't say what a whip is, it is a work in progress. It's something that we are, can have one stitch, it can have um, almost 99% done and it's still a work in progress. So this one is gonna get some attention again soon because I just really enjoy stitching on it. 
um, what I've truly been trying to catch up on lately is the hometown sale by Teresa Kogut. Um, she's doing the mystery sale and it's a two year long mystery sale. But I got behind because she changed things a little bit on me and it messed me up. Um, and so I ended up ripping things I have ripped out more than I even care to tell you on this one. I don't have a decent, pardon all my extra threads, you guys. I don't have a decent picture of this one because it's just a mock-up. Um, but actually, this whole house is done already. There's a few sheep in here yet that I need to do to catch up. I'm only going as far as I, I can see if there's a full house done or a full um, item finished. I'm not doing halves because a lot of her sections that come, come cut in half. And so you can't see the whole house. And so to me, it seems silly to have like one row that you have to do here, but you stop because you can't see what the next piece is. So I don't stitch a house until I can see the entire thing, but don't you guys love it? I just love it. I just put the lamp posts in and underneath this burgundy house that I'm putting in now is gonna be some sheep. I'm super excited to do the sheep. Um, I know Teresa has done some color changes um, according to what she initially uh, charted, um, but she started using some fancy floss and I don't want to. I want mine to have kind of a very solid look to them. So I'm gonna just stick with the DMC I think on it. And one thing I am doing since this is, this is on 36 count up in the attic. Up in the attic was the called for, but it was called for 40, which I did not have. I didn't think I had, but I found it later. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it called for 40. I'm doing it on 36, but I didn't like my coverage on the roofs where it's really dark and with really big blocks. So I did two over two on the first leg and then one over two on the second leg back, just to give it a little bit more fullness and, and make it look a little bit more solid. But, oh, I love it, I love it. It's really been fun. Um, so it just took me a lot of time to catch up because I have had to rip out so terrible much on this one, but I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So excited to keep going on that one. And then I've been working on a little bit on Dasher and Dancer. This one has a cell that um, Handmade by Sarah W. started um, in conjunction, I think, with Stitchy Sarah Reads. Um, Sarah's, Sarah's Stitchery, I think she is on YouTube. And it's Dash and Dance Cell. If anybody wants to join in, it's such a pretty one, you guys. When I saw her starting it, I just went, yes need to do that one and talked my friend Beth from Red Cross Stitcher into jumping in with us and a couple of other people joined in as well and that's when um, Sarah decided we probably should have a cell to go along with that so I'll put the name of it on the bottom across the bottom here for you guys um, before we're done I have a mess here you guys um, and this one all I really worked on and I'm doing this one on the 25th of every month, uh, like a Christmas stitch. And the only thing that I really worked on was this little piece here, this shaker piece on the 25th this last time. But I'm okay with that. Like I said, I just want to keep going. And you guys, when I pulled this one out and it was in my bag, I don't know how this happened, but there was a, a dark spot right here, which is not gonna get covered. So I carefully took my Q-tip and my cleaner and my hair dryer, and I don't, I don't think, you guys let me know if you think you can see a dark spot there yet. I had a little mini heart attack, little one, big one, kind of a big one. So I'm really hoping that I didn't wreck the fabric. I'm hoping that it doesn't show, that it'll just kind of blend in since there's quite a bit of modeling on there. But isn't that pretty? I love this stitch. This is the first one I've ever done that's monochromatic, and I love it. I love all my stitches, you guys. Are you the same way? I just love everything. I want to stitch all the time, but that's not in the cards. Okay, then the last one that I worked on 
I don't know if I have a picture of it. I will insert one. This is a full coverage piece that I bought and started. Oh, I do have a picture. Um, on the 24th of February, that was the anniversary of my husband's death. And I have found that it's really wonderful to have a fun new project to look forward to on some of those more difficult days. Um, it occupies my mind. It keeps me from dwelling on things. Um, and what's better than to have a new start, right? So this is what I chose. It reminds me a lot of my dog. Finley, come here and tell me, does that look like my Finley? Look up here. Up here. Oh, no, we're going to go behind me. <laughs> She's hiding. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's my full coverage that I started. I love it, love it, love it. Looks like my dog. I love umbrellas. I love the bright colors. I love the lamppost. All of my favorite things. So I have such a humongous start. Huge. <laughs> I have... Of course, threads everywhere because that's what you do. You park, which is new to me. I'm a huge start. Huge, 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 not. <laughs> but at least I get to start with color. That's kind of fun. I was watching Teresa, the little stitcher, and she was giving clues on how to do full coverage. And I'm kind of doing it wrong, and so I'm going to go back and do it the way she, she does like a 10 by 10 grid. 10 by 10, 10 by 10, 10 by 10, and then she'll jump down here and do one. She doesn't go in rows, she kind of does a diagonal, and she jumps around so that she doesn't get any definite lines that show where she stopped and started. So I think that's the way I'm going to tackle this one too. Um, so I don't have a rotation in mind yet for that one, but if I don't get him into my rotation, it will be 20 years. And oh, that was also kind of my leap year start. Did I start it on the 29th? I think I actually started it on the 29th. I think I kitted it up on the 24th and I started it on leap year. So I'm supposed to only give myself four years to try to get that one done. So <laughs> we'll see. So uh, he's gonna have to get into the rotation somehow. So that's really about all that I've worked on you guys. Um, I've been super busy. Um, my work has been um, a little bit crazy for me lately and I come home at night and I'm tired and I don't know if I feel like stitching sometimes and so there's been a few nights where I have simply fallen asleep because I was tired. So I haven't done as much stitching as I would have liked but um, there's not there's no race here except that I have more than I can stitch in my lifetime and I need to quit purchasing but that leads us right into haul. <laughs> And really what I should do, because I was organizing some of my patterns today, and I should stop buying patterns and focus on supplies, like focus on kitting up some things, a few more things. Um, I do have a good 20 other things kitted and ready to go. Uh, big things, not even small things. But um, I need to quit buying patterns. It's okay if I buy fabric, because I need that, but yeah. Anyway, let's start with my fabric. I belong to four different um, Fabric of the Month clubs. One of them is through Grace Notes Fabrics. And the one I got this time was called Cupid. And it's just this really, really pretty light pink color. I'm hoping my lighting is really poor today. We're having a little bit of a winter storm kind of coming in. This is almost picking up like a bit of purple, but it's pink. It's just a really pretty light pink. That's called Cupid by Grace Note Fabrics. Then I also belong to Be Stitch Me. And the one I got from her is 40 count. I think everything I'm getting right now is 40 count. That really is my preferred size to stitch on. Um, and this one's called Vanilla Latte. And it really has a yellowish peachy color to it. I feel like the color isn't bad. I mean, like it's picking up a pretty true rendition of what that color is. So that one's Vanilla Latte by Be Stitch Me. And then I got Fox and Rabbit called All Hollows. This is a very different one. I don't know what I'm gonna use this on. It's, it's unique. It's got gorgeous colors. I just don't quite know what I will do with it. So that's all hollows and it's a combination of 
coral and gray. It's pretty true, you guys. It's looking pretty true to color on the screen. Isn't that unique? That modeling in there. So if you have ideas on what I can do with that, I don't have a clue. That's just not really in my wheelhouse. That's way outside of my comfort zone, but it's pretty. It's really pretty. And then the last one is um, the Atomic Ranch fabric of the month. And this one is called Winter Mint. So it has just a light green color to it. Yeah, that one's not showing as green. Maybe this way. It's got just a real light green. This is looking a little darker green. It's really very mint colored, very light green. So that one's really super pretty too. So we'll put those in the stash. And it's always nice to have some things to pull out though, don't you think, um, when you're looking for something special. I love being able to just simply go to my closet and pull out fabric or pull out uh, floss, mostly DMC. Um, I do have a pretty good collection going with my color and cotton. Um, so I feel like I have, I'm starting to get a really good base. Um, I haven't delved into a whole lot of silks yet. Um, I did get my very first um, Vicki Clayton order with the um, sale that we're doing with for uh, Carrie Tiger Lily for her birthday sale. I did get her, um, sorry for all the crinkling guys. I'm just trying to keep them organized so I don't lose track of the colors. Um, whoops. So that's kind of my first endeavor. I do have um, Sunnyside Sampler by the Drawn Thread kitted up with Dinky Dyes, so, but I haven't started that one yet. Um, so I haven't really done a whole lot of stitching with silk yet. So um, it's kind of fun to see see the difference and to see if I'm going to love it, to see what the coverage is going to be. So I'm excited to try that. Okay, talking about color and cotton. I got my color and cotton threads in and I have two subscriptions to that one. One of them is all colors. Look at those gorgeous, gorgeous colors. If you guys need me to take them out and name them off, let me know. But I think I'm going to leave them in the bag for now. And then I have um, the primitive colors, and those are, or the neutral, primitive or neutral. And there's 10 of them in that one. And these are my primitive colors. It's got a beautiful rose color in there. So it's amazing to me always that you can have 10 browns and still not have the right brown, or 10 tans, and still not have quite the right tan. <laughs> So I do like having those neutrals. I like building up my stash with those neutrals. Okay. Oops, I forgot to put that one back in the Smith sampler. Here we go. I don't want to have too big of a mess when I'm done. I know I'll have a mess, but um, then I think I'm going to jump into haul. So I'm not even going to show you guys everything because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but I belong to this um, Country Cottage Ornament, the pastel collection, and my second one came. It's just a little church. Boy, I can't really see that very good, can you? There we go. That's a little bit better. So that's the second ornament. And then I was um, whoops, watching Teresa Little Stitcher, and she had done a Chatelaine called Evening in the Park that I thought was so incredibly beautiful. And this, I think I've shown this to you guys already. I've been working on kitting it up because it takes <sighs> silks and it takes beads and it takes um, NPIs and Karen watercolor lilies, water lilies, Karen water lilies and um, S and N colors, the thread gatherer silken colors. Um, and it takes some, petite treasure braids and just a lot and like Swarovski. So I've been working on kitting it up. This does not do it justice. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to post a picture of hers in here so that you guys can see what hers looks like. It's really stunning. And I think it's also huge. And I think it's going to take me a while once I get started on that one, but I love it. 
and um, I've been trying to find the right fabric and I had this idea. She did hers on almost like a cornflower blue background, which I thought was beautiful, but I wanna do green. I like green. And so when I saw that they had this new green color coming out at market called Malachite, I thought, oh, maybe that would be pretty. Way too dark. Way too dark. Way, 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 way too dark. So now I have a whole bunch of Malachite. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know what I'm going to do with. So I'm still on the hunt. I did order something from 123 Stitch, and I haven't done a floss toss yet on it. Like I said, I don't have all my floss and everything for it, um, but it, it's kind of a eucalyptus e color. So um, I'm hoping that that might work better. Uh, so I, as soon as I have more of my threads, I think I'll try to do a floss toss on it and see if that's going to work or not. So that one is a work in progress as far as getting it kitted up. Then I have, saw so many people doing this one, I had to buy Rejoice Evermore. And that one's by Brenda Gervais. I think it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And this one I bought off the swap. It's Rosewood Manor. And it is intricate. And a lot of pages, but it's really pretty. Am I crazy to try that one? Oh, I think that's pretty. Rosewood Manor is the name of the company. What is the name of the pattern? I don't know, then Q1108? Basket of Flowers Sampler, it's called. And it's 230 by 290, so it's kind of a big girl, but very, very pretty. That was one I picked up off of the swap, I think. This one I picked up off of Etsy, The Bells on Christmas Day. Why did I want this one? <laughs> Usually there's always one standout somewhere in here that I just go, oh, I need it. And I don't even remember anymore which one I thought I had to have. But this is The Bells on Christmas Day book. And this is by Blackbird. Bring it back a little bit so you can see it better. And then I've been slowly collecting the Prairie Schooler Santas. This is the 1991 Prairie Schooler. I don't love all of them. I've got probably about 20 or so, maybe 25. And I'm hop, skipping and jumping around to the ones that I like. And I'm not purchasing everything. I'm just kind of getting the ones that I like. So that was one I added. This one I thought was so cool, Cross and Patch. It's by, it's the Doxology. I've never seen this before. And I thought it was just really, I don't know if I'll do these exact colors, but it's Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. I thought that the font and everything on there was just really stunning. Love it, love it. Not something I could hang up year round. So I got that one. I think that one came off of the swap somewhere. I'm sure it did because it's open. Emily Bishop. Doxology. Oof, it's not small. It's 219 by 170. Oof, okay. Oof, I have a habit of picking the big guys, don't I? Get that one put back, and then I picked up another prairie schooler that I thought was super cute. Prairie schooler Christmas. I thought some of those would make adorable ornaments. Love the swan, of course, but I like the deer, I like the camel, the quilt square. So many of them on there. The squirrel. That's very cute. Tree of Life sampler called Joy's Assurance, and I love just the words. Joyous the assurance of God's presence. Very simple. Very muted, but I love it. And this one, I'm not sure why I bought it. <laughs> I think I was taken by the elephants. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not going to stitch this, you guys. It's Noah's Ark. But I thought those elephants were cool. And the giraffes. Actually, I kind of liked the cows. I liked everything about it, but I don't want to do a Noah's Ark. So I don't know what I'm going to pull off of that, but I think I'll pull something out of there. 
but I'm not sure what. Okay, so those were the patterns that I purchased outside of Nashville, of needle of the market, marketplace. Um, so the first one that I bought, like everyone else, is Serenity by Teresa Kogut. And you guys have all seen it, but I was really fortunate. Um, I have a friend, um, Luann, Luann, Leanne? I never quite remember which one to call her. I think I've seen it listed as Luann, but I've always been calling her Leanne. Um, she found out where to find up in the attic, 40 count, and you need a fat half. And so I was able to get my up in the attic for my background for this one. So really, really excited about that. So I just need to get my threads pulled together for that one. This next one, I liked it so much. Yep, I bought it twice. Plum Street Samplers, Proverbs 31 Sampler. And this one I bought with all the threads. So I have an extra one. I am going to have a giveaway. <laughs> Down the road, I will have a giveaway. Oh, guys, this couch is not comfortable. No wonder I don't sit here. Okay. Um, and then from um, Jeanette Douglas, I got Heart and Home. I just thought that was really, really pretty. I love houses. I don't have a whole lot for Valentine's, and I thought that kind of would, would work well for a stitch for Valentine, Valentine's Day. I'm going to go through these quickly because I'm sure you guys have seen these all already. I got Teresa Kogut's. Hello Spring, her book. This is fabulous, you guys. I love this one so much. And you've seen this one and I can't wait to start this one. This is Faith. This one's by Summer House Stitchworks. And this one is Blackbird Designs, Thy Love More Strong. And I may get the other one too. But I really liked some of the smaller ones in here. I thought they would make great little smalls for giveaways. And then I bought Spring Beginnings by Plum Street Sampler. Couldn't resist that one. Couldn't resist it. Thought it was so sweet. And this one is a company I wasn't really very familiar with, Blue, Blueberry Ridge. And they had this spring one. That was a monochromatic. And look at how pretty those little elements in there are. Of course, I got sucked in by the umbrella again, you guys. And the houses. Anyway, love that one. And Sweet Wing Studio had some really, really great ones too. Um, but I really liked this one. Um, kind of a take on um, Narnia. Far Better Things. And Trumpet of Swans, Biscornu. Um, this one is by Stacy Nash. And of course, it has swans. They're kind of hard to see, but there are swans all the way around. And I have not made a Biscornu yet. So I thought, yep, that's a good time to try it. And of course I got Frosty Tiny Town because <laughs> Just because that's another one that I almost have finished, you guys. I did the fall tiny town and um, I never did finish it completely and I've got it all cut and pinned and ready to be stitched down. So that one will hopefully will be one of the ones I can show you as a finish next time. But oh, cute, cute, cute. And then love these so much. This is a coordinated effort by um, Oh, Shakespeare's Peddler and Plum Street. And they did Stars and Stripes. And I cannot wait to do these. I know that it won't be this year. But aren't those pretty? Oh, I love them so much. Cannot wait to have those done and displayed. I will probably turn those into pillows. Love those. And what else do I have? Um, prob oh, no, no way. Oh, you guys, I 
think I bought it three times. I think I bought this three times. Oh my stars. I was trying to spread the love. I was not shopping with just one store. I was, okay. Didn't even realize I had done that. Okay, and then <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Let's not dwell on that one, okay? <laughs> and then there was a freebie that came. I ordered the three new classic color work colors that came out and with it came this little chart um, little by the Little House Needleworks. It's just a complimentary chart. just like a little, and it just calls for those colors. So I'm not sure if I'll stitch that or not, but these were the colors from Market, the new colors. They are London Fog, Weather Vane, and Misty Mauve. Whoops. Pretty colors, very pretty colors. Turn them like this, ooh. Aren't those gorgeous, you guys? Oh, pretty, pretty. I have got to get all my stuff put away now. I've been throwing everything in a bin because I wanted to show them all to you guys. Now I've got to find a home for everything. Okay, and the last one I have, oh my stars. Um, I think it's been over a month since I've seen you guys because I've got more fabric here at the bottom of the pile from Grace Note Fabrics and from Atomic Ranch. So I think it was like five weeks maybe since I've done one. But the last one I got from um, Nashville was The Dance and that's by Annie, the proper stitcher. I thought the words on that and the tree, they just captivated me. I thought they were really, really special. Okay, so I guess I have Spring Breeze by Grace Note Fabrics, which is kind of a light aqua, aquamarine blue. And the other one is Blush by Atomic Ranch. This one is actually a 36. I might have to stop that one. I don't love 36. Okay. I think that's about it, guys, of what I have worked on. I've been finding that my book of days has been kind of invaluable in helping me keep track of what I've stitched and what I haven't and the days that I've stitched and... Um, so I, I'm really liking having that this year. I needed to reorganize because my piles were starting to slip and slide away. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you, I went crazy, absolutely crazy. And I got some project bags. Um, found some of them on the D-Stash sites on Facebook. Um, most of them came, several came from Como Stitches, some from Wildberry Stitching. I happened to catch them. I am never, ever fast enough to catch them when they have their sales, and this time I was. So I bought what I could. But this one was just off of one of the stash sites, and I just love it. I love, love, love. It's extra tall. And I just love that it looks like a sampler. I don't have anything quite like that. I have something sort of like that, but not quite. And then this one also came off. I wish that they had tags on them, but this one also came off of, I wish I could remember a stash site or something, but it's gorgeous, you guys. The colors are so vibrant. It is just plain white on the inside, but it's all quilted. Look at the quilting and the back. Is that not so pretty? Oh, I think that's so pretty. Then the next two, I believe, these are both Wildberry Stitching and they're kind of the same fabric line. And I didn't remember buying both of these, but apparently I did. I got the this, this small square patches in fabric. And then I got this one as well. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. I just fell in love with the colors and stuff. Green is one of my favorite colors along with pink. And this one has beautiful interior fabric. Isn't that gorgeous? She does such a beautiful job. That's Wildberry Stitching. And then 
I caught Como Stitches, Jess from Como Stitches. Boy, did I catch Jess from Como Stitches. So <laughs> let me show you what I got from her. Um, I got a bunny one. I'm gonna unzip it. It's got um, these beautiful soft bunnies on the front paired with green. The bunnies on the back and then a very pretty polka dot pink inside. That was Como Stitches. And then I wanted one of her vinyl ones because I love this green. So I got one of her vinyl ones. But that was beautiful. She does an amazing job. Her bags are beautiful. And earlier before I had gotten in on a pre-order that she had on a vinyl. It was these houses. And that one was a pre-order, so I actually had to wait just a little bit to get that one. But that was beautiful too. And that's it. Oh no, there's one more. This one I got off of the swap. And this one actually, it's by Melanie Henson off of one of the D-Stash groups. And um, I actually, it's beautiful, but I held it up next to some of the others and it's quite a bit smaller. I haven't actually measured it, but it's not nearly as big as some of the other ones are. Very pretty colors though, beautiful. Okay, now I think I'm done. I'm going to regroup and I'm going to get my thoughts together for the um, finish, okay? Thanks. Since I overspent and overpurchased on the Proverbs 31 sampler, I gotta make sure yeah, I truly do have three of them. Um, I would like to do a giveaway to two people. Today, um, each one will get one of the Proverbs 31 samplers from Plum Street Sampler. And so if you guys are interested in this, um, I think I'd like you to put in the comments, um, Proverbs, just Proverbs. And um, I'll pick somebody for, at the next uh, video that I do and I'll try to put links for some of the stuff guys um, in the notes at the bottom. I don't know if I really talked about a whole lot there um, but I'll put links in the bottom to any of the other things that I included on the video and I'll try to put some um, like cell names that type of thing across it as well. If you have any questions <laughs> I feel like I did this in a hurry. If you have any questions at all, please, please reach out to me and I'll research and I'll try to find the information that you're looking for. I did have somebody ask me last time if I would show them um, my fabric storage and I will do that the next time. It's not looking pretty at the moment. I need to, it's kind of squashed and I need to extend it and I have a little bit of room to do that. So, but it's just going to take a little bit of organization. So next time around, I will show you guys um, my fabric storage organization. And if you want to see something else, holler, okay? All right, guys. So if you're interested in this one, because I'm an, I'm a squirrel, <laughs> Um, and I wanted to share the love, say Proverbs, okay? And I'll be happy to send that out to you guys. I had to go grab my notes because last time I forgot to do my blessing moment. I couldn't believe it. I got all done, I got it uploaded in a day or two later and like, you didn't even do your blessing moment. So I wanted to make sure that I got that done this time. So I grabbed my iPad because I had written down a couple of different ideas um, of just different things that we could do. Um, I like to just do one at a time. Um, so for this week, I would love to encourage you all to send a card or a letter to one of our servicemen. I'm not sure how to get in touch with them, um, but I'm sure that there are definitely ways um, and avenues where you can get an address. If I find out how to do that, I'll attach it. I'll put it in my notes at the bottom here. Um, but I just think for them to get mail, is kind of huge. Um, I think they can tend to feel very lost and alone when they're on tour. So um, I think it would be really cool this time if we focused on our men and women who are serving for our country. Um, so that's my blessing moment for this week. I just wanna wish you all health, wish you all love and joy, and um, that you'll keep stitching and enjoying this wonderful craft that God has given us. And we will catch you all the next time, okay? Bye all. Thank mm -hmm. you.